Okay, so in today's math uh, lesson, what we started doing is adding and subtracting mixed numbers um, using fractions and as decimals, actually, and started talking about terminology and things like that. So let's begin. So we have Samantha and her friends. They're going on a road trip. It's 245 and 750th miles long. So I'm just going to draw a quick little sketch of that. So that's my total. That's the total for the trip, 245 and 750th. So all right. They have already driven 128 and 53 one hundredths, so I'm going to put that in. This is what they've already done, and 53 one hundredths. And so what I'm looking for here is how much farther do they have to travel. Now this is setting up to be a nice subtraction problem here. I have my total, and I have two parts that add to that total. These are called add-ends. Okay. Well, if I'm missing one of the parts, what I can do is subtract the piece I do know from the total, and I'm left with what I do not know. Okay, so let's set that up. So I'm going to have two four, 245 and 7 fiftieths minus 128 and 53 one hundredths. Okay, and it's a nice little subtraction problem here. These two guys have names, by the way. Uh, this guy is called your minuend. And this guy is called your subtrahend. In case you didn't know. Your subtrahend. Okay. Um, now... Let's begin. So what we have here is a problem. We have fiftieths and we have hundredths. Now I can turn everything into a fraction, which would be great. Into a, sorry, common denominator is equal size fractions. Or equal size pieces of my pizza, I guess, if you want. 245, let me turn everything into hundredths. Good news is, this guy is already one hundredths. What I like to call a friendly fraction, okay? Now, as far as sevenths are concerned, I have seven fiftieths. That should give me 14 one hundredths. Okay? So seven fiftieths is equivalent to 14 over 100. And this is what I'm going to subtract. So I have my 245 and my 14 over 100 and my 128 and my 53 over 100. Now, I can't take 53 from 14, so I need to take one of these pies. Okay? I'm going to take one of those pizza pies. I'm going to turn it into hundredths because everything is hundredths in this case. All my slices need to be the same size. Everything is hundredths, and that would give me 100 one-hundredths, right? So one whole pie, 100 over 100, but I already have 14, okay? So I'm going to take that 14, add it to the 100, and I get 114, okay? So 114 minus 53, and then I can do off on the side. So 114 minus 53, there's a 1. 11 minus 5 gives me 6. So I wind up with 61 over 100, and now I can subtract these guys. I need to borrow again. So that's a 6 there, that's a 1, and that's a 1. So 116 and 61 one hundredths. Okay? Or the decimal route. Now the decimal route, this one's nice and clean. 128 and 53 one hundredths. That works out nicely. There's 53 one hundredths. And that was my subtrahend. So now for my minuend, I have a 50th, but if I turn that into 1 hundredths, there's my 14 hundredths, right? It's right over here, that 14 hundredths. So 245 and 14 hundredths, which is working out pretty nicely. So, oh, I'm sorry, I wanted the decimal on that one. So into fraction mode. So there's my 14 hundredths. Now I can list this one or re rewrite this one top to bottom. 128, there's a 53, and now I can start uh, subtracting. So I need to borrow over here. That becomes a 6. There we go. Let's borrow again. There's another 6, and there's a 1, and there's a 1. Okay? There you have it. Nice little match there. 61 one hundredths, 61 one hundredths, and I'm feeling pretty good. So the kids had to decide which way they liked better. Did they like the fraction way or the decimal way? In this way, I probably uh, cruise with the decimal on this one. Just seems a lot user friendly uh, as far as problems are concerned. All right. Let's take a look, uh, quick look at another one. So we have Ben. He needs to uh, replace two sides of his fence. One side is 367 and 9 one hundredths meters long, and the other side is 329 and 3 tenths meters long. How much fence does he need to buy? So we're going to combine these two. And if you're a little unsure what's going on here, uh, we have, let's see, so we have 367 and 9 one hundredths is one part, and he needs the 329, 
This one's a little smaller and three tenths, but I drew it larger, sorry. And I need this. So these are my add ends, and this is going to be my sum. Now, as far as decimals are concerned, I'd probably go the decimal route on this one. I see nice user-friendly uh, fractions here. And so I'd probably just go right after the 367 and 9 one hundredths, which looks like that. Careful where you put that 9. Add to that 329 and 3 tenths, which is right there. And I'm just going to fill in some holes a little bit and start adding. So I'll keep my apples with my apples, my tenths with my tenths, all my place values together. So there you are, there's a 16, there's a 6, 7, 8, 9, and there is a 6 centimeters. Now if you want to run the fraction, that's fine too. 3, 6, 7, uh, 9, 1 hundredths. Uh, add to that, I need everything to be the same size. Add to that 329, and I need 1 hundredths. I need to add 1 hundredths with 1 hundredths. Now if I have... 3 tenths, that's going to give me 30 one hundredths. That's not so bad. So I wind up with 367 and 9 one hundredths, and 329 and 30 one hundredths. Add all that up, I get 39 out of 100 on this side, and this guy I have a 6, 6, 7, 8, 9, I have a 9, 3 plus 3 gives me 6, and how do I look here? So I have, let's see. 396.39 or 396 and 39 hundredths, and look at that. Same thing. Don't forget my unit, and I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, so that's the deal, folks. All right, thanks so much. Take care. Bye bye.